The Auburn Tigers destroy, destroy the South Carolina Gamecocks and get the Tigers that first win in the SEC tournament. I'm Zach Blackerby. He is Daryl Daprich. And what a win, Daryl, for these Auburn Tigers. It is unheard of. First of all, I'm a little disappointed. I mean, Auburn only beat them 31. That's nine less than the first time, right? So we're <laughs> just amazing to me. Look, it, it's rare. So understand that we're in rarefied Ooh. air, and I'm not overblowing this or exaggerating this. When you beat a team by 40 in the regular season, it is yeah. very, very rare that you blow them out the second time, unless they absolutely suck, right? I mean, if they're a bottom feeder, South Carolina's not. South Carolina's a potential five seed in the NCAA tournament. They were a five seed in this tournament. They don't yeah. suck. They're ranked. To beat a team 31 in a postseason tournament after you beat them 40 is really, really making a statement. Hold on, boys and girls. This team could be really special. And they got the monkey off their back of getting out of the first round of the tournament the last couple of years in a huge way. If you're going to do it, that's how you do it. You make oh, no mistake yes. about it. Yes, it's I mean, hard. The, the pressure, Daryl, was all on Auburn. I think the pressure was all on Auburn because they haven't won an SEC tournament game since they won it back in uh, in 2019. And yep. you know they were thinking about that. You know all that. And they talked about Bruce Pearl's messaging consistently throughout the broadcast. Like, we're not losing again. We're not losing another game this season. And clearly, clearly this team is bought in because the way that they played it feels like we talked about this the last few times we've done this, Daryl, but it feels like Auburn is peaking at the right time. Well, this is their fourth win in a row, I think, right after the Tennessee lost. But it's not about just winning. It's how they're winning. You can watch teams win where they just hang on. They struggle. They win ugly. Auburn is winning, and they're winning impressively. And look, to go back to your other point, to talk about how important it is to get out of the first round, and, and I don't want to be dramatic about this, the last time Auburn won a game in the SEC tournament, nobody knew what COVID-19 was. Wild. I mean, no one – we didn't know the Wild. word pandemic or or, yeah. or mask up. I mean, all that stuff, social distancing. That That is – there's a lot of water that's gone under the bridge. And so, again, you do it. To beat somebody twice in the same year, people that play sports and have coached sports and are, are sports enthusiasts, they know exactly what I'm saying. It's so hard to do when it's a good team. And then to do it and to do it the way they did it, you beat them 40 and then come back and beat them 31. Holy crap. I mean, you beat talk down. about making a statement. And that is why I agree with you 100% on buying in. It's peaking at the right time. You have to be peaking at the right time to accomplish that, to do this in the way they're doing it. Man, I, I love where this basketball team is right now. The whole big picture is, no matter what happens from here on out, Auburn can only move up on the seed line. And I know that I've been saying the SEC tournament being played on a Sunday, the championship game, but I've done a little research the last 24 hours, and the guys that I trust, the pundits, the bracketologists that are known to be accurate – that aren't named Joe Lenardi, who's not, these guys have all said Auburn wins this game today and the worst they can do is four. Mm. That tells me there's a door open there that they could get to three with doing what they need to do the next couple days. So Yeah, I, I do wonder, though, like they're not going to get a quality win because they don't play Tennessee tomorrow. Tennessee lost. Tennessee did not show up uh, despite them essentially being the home crowd. The Mississippi State took it to them. And like, if Auburn is to beat Mississippi State, which we'll make our picks later, but I think they will beat Mississippi State tomorrow, and I think Auburn will be playing on Sunday in the SEC Tournament Championship game, but they, they're not going to have that quality win like we thought that they could because they won't play Tennessee. Well, but that's okay because I think even if they win tomorrow, that's not going to do anything for the seed line, even if it was Tennessee. My statement was based upon Auburn winning the SEC championship is the only way I see them moving up a seed line. I, I think you. if they got to the title game and got beat, regardless who they beat to get there, I think they're locked in at a four. But let's just say Kentucky who's as hot as anybody in the country right now, mm -hmm. and everybody loves Kentucky, falls in love with them. All the national guys have been waiting for this like, like they're waiting for Christmas. They're pretty good. Kentucky, 
They're pretty stinking good, and they're peaking at the right time, too. Kentucky's yeah. playing really good basketball. Not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but if Auburn was to play Kentucky in the championship and win that game, that whole I want it so away. bad. I want yeah. it so bad. Daryl, I, I, want, I want Auburn to play Kentucky or Alabama in the SEC Tournament Championship. I mean, what a great opportunity and moment that would be. And we'll certainly see uh, we'll certainly see what happens with all of that. But I think Mississippi State beating Tennessee is huge. I, I really think Auburn matches up well with them. They split with Mississippi State in the regular season. It was close at their place. It was not close at our place. And we'll see what happens if it you know on a neutral a neutral court tomorrow. But I, I just I think the way that this team is playing and the fact that they throw so much at you. You saw South Carolina, who, you know, th they played yesterday. You saw how fatigued they were with about 10 minutes left in the game. Darryl, they ran out. They ran out of gas. Yeah. And you're talking about a Mississippi State team who plays a physical brand similar to what South Carolina does. And not only did they play today, but they played yesterday. And they're going to have to play their third game in three days against a, a more fresh Auburn team who their starters didn't have to play the last three minutes of the game. I, I just think I just think Auburn, from a freshness standpoint and from a situational standpoint, and the benefit of getting that double bye, which South Carolina did not, and, and obviously Miss, uh, Mississippi State did not, I, I think that's really going to come into play tomorrow, and I think Auburn's going to be playing for a championship on Sunday. We kind of hinted at, when we did our little preview on this morning show, about yeah. how... Auburn's depth combined with a team playing twice in two days could be the perfect storm for Auburn because they have depth already. And then you combine that with a team's playing its second game in a row. And it, it, it came to fruition. I mean, you saw it. I, I saw reports that South Carolina going into the tunnel at halftime looked done. Looked done. And they Dude, were only How could 20. they not be? They yeah, had they were their manhood taken from them early. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> It, what happens is it starts to play old tapes. And, it, you know, you know this. You get beat yeah. 40, and then you go, oh, my God, here we go again. We're down 20 at halftime, which is exactly half of 40. And you're thinking, you know, this is just psychological. Well, now you've got a Mississippi State team, like you said, who plays very physical. They expend yeah. a ton of energy every time they win a game or play a game because of their style of right. play. And now you're playing three games in three days against an Auburn team who you split with. See, again, I like the fact that Auburn hasn't, gone 2 and 0 against Mississippi State. This is the rubber match, right? This is this is good. It's Auburn's in a good place. But Auburn needs to not look ahead and go, "Oh, we got the 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 bracket we want. We got the matchup we want. You take this game like Mississippi State beat us already this year. It was embarrassing yeah. at their place. And you build on that and you use whatever you can to motivate your team whether it's some idiots saying something to a coach in an elevator yesterday. Or if what, it's what are you talking about, Daryl? What well, happened? Well, so we've got some confirmation with some people that are there that that are really connected to the Al the Auburn basketball team. That South Carolina was feeling pretty good about themselves after their win yesterday, and they saw an assistant coach at all of Auburn who shall remain nameless in the elevator <laughs> and said, "This ain't the jungle, baby. You guys it's are not the jungle, baby. You guys are going down <laughs> tomorrow." And so said coach shared this information with the players at the film session by which one of the players, Janai Broom, coming out of the film session, tweeted yesterday, the jungle travels. And that was a direct response as to what South Carolina was talking about, feeling good about themselves. You know, sometimes when you get boat raced by 40, it's best just to keep your mouth shut, know your role, and just show up and play. And yeah. they, they woke the sleeping giant. You don't need to do that. Just keep quiet, play your game. If you're confident, great. I expect you to be confident. But to do that, that was just stupid. And it they paid the price but, for it. Hey, South Carolina, good job for being Arkansas. Good job. Yeah. That's great. Very proud of you. Mm -hmm. Very proud of you, South Carolina. Now, look, there's a lot of talk about Auburn doing enough to move up to a three seed. And you changed my mind on this. I kind of went into this morning's edition of Locked on Auburn saying there wasn't a big difference between a three and a four seed. You adjusted my views on that a little bit. I, I still think, um, I don't think it's a crazy difference, but I do think it's worth the discussion. And, and like you said, because of who you play in the second round because of that. But I don't think that's really what the discussion needs to be about. And that's what, you know, we've already mentioned that. And, and that's 
one of the main things happening in our live chat right now, almost 600 people in here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. But I think the conversation needs to be about the fact that Auburn can get a ring and hang another banner in two days. The path is there, Daryl. We've seen this team be so good in situations where they have the opportunity to get revenge and make it even with the team that beat them earlier this year. I want this Auburn team to play Kentucky. I think they're going to handle Mississippi State tomorrow. And Daryl, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think it'll be close. I really don't. I think the fatigue factor with what Mississippi State having to play three games in three days against Auburn's depth, I, I, I think it's going to wear them down. I really do. Auburn has a chance to do something and it has not done a ton in its history. And that's when tournament championships and win championships in the sport of basketball. And they've got a chance to do that this weekend. And the path is clearer now than it has been at any point this season. Three seeds are way, they're better than four seeds. Sure. Does Auburn deserve a three seed? Sure. I don't care. We have a chance to get another banner and another championship for this program. I think it's going to happen this weekend. Yeah, I think the Mississippi State game, you know, because of their style of play and just for some reason the way Chris Jan is a head coach when he was at New Mexico State and at Mississippi State prevents, he's like Buzz Williams. He, he kind of has a little bit of a, a matchup. Uh, it's a matchup problem, his coaching style for Bruce Pearl. That being said, I expect, I would I would say Auburn should be flit, favored and I would pick Auburn to win that game tomorrow. Yeah. That That being said, you're absolutely dead on. If I'm Auburn's coaches, I'm telling my team starting tonight, I don't want to hear one word about the NCAA tournament. Put it out of your mind. Don't talk about it. Win a championship. Don't think about it. You have the chance we're to all win a SEC, championship. We're all SEC tournament right now and nothing else. Don't even talk about the NCAA tournament. We're not even going to pretend like it's there. We're talking about winning two games in two games, two, two games in two days and hanging right. a banner. That's it. That needs to be the focus. Yeah, and <laughs> – Bruce Pearl, you know, every now and then, the you know, if we watch a game on ESPN or the network or whatever, it'll kind of show Bruce Pearl talking to this team. And I remember the the video that it showed before we hosted Alabama and beat them earlier this year. And he's like, if you want to leave your legacy, if you want to, you know, make it up to these people that cheer for you and have helped you build this program, beat Alabama. And they did. They went out and did that. You want to become legendary? I mean, the way we talk about this 2019 team, the way we talk about Jabari Smith and Walker Kessler now, if you want to be legendary at Auburn, win a championship. Doesn't matter if it's a regular season championship. It doesn't matter if it's a tournament championship. Win a ring, hang a banner. Janai Broom can be one of the best Auburn athletes in the history of this program if Auburn wins their next two games. I think they beat state tomorrow whether they play kentucky or play alabama or whoever it is on that side of the bracket on sunday it doesn't matter if you want to be a legendary player katie johnson if you want to be a legendary player jalen williams who already has an sec championship but talk about really just solidifying yourself and getting multiple i mean they've got a chance daryl and that path once again i cannot stress enough that path is more direct and more clear now than it has been at any point this season yeah, sometimes things just break for you the way it needs to be. Now you have to be able to take advantage of take that. Take advantage you, of it. Yep. You, and, and I will say this about Janai Broom. In his two years at Auburn, you know, what, what, looking back and being reflective upon his time here, he will go down. His legacy is cemented, in my opinion, and he can only get better. He can only improve and become legendary in his legacy. But as it stands right now, he has been one of the most special. Yes. G great yes. Mount Rushmore type basketball players yes. that come through Auburn. Period. You can go ahead and say it. His legacy and what he's done for this program in two years. He's special and he's an Auburn great right well, now. That's it, that's what it is. He he's in the Mount Rushmore if he wins two more games. Yeah, these next yeah. two games, he he is a top four player. I think you can make that argument. I really think you can. But you got to win, yeah, win, 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 win a championship. Yeah, you got to win a championship. And I always and I believe too. I'm one of those guys that I get it. 
guys that are athletes that are really special that have one year at Auburn, though, I, I really like to see it be more than one year. You know, a, a, a Jabari Smith played one year, Walker Custer one year, Cam Newton one year. True, what they did was phenomenal. But the guys that stay more than one and have multiple seasons and stack those and sustain those – to me, have a higher place in the echelon of Auburn greatness because they were there more than one year. That's just yeah. how I look I mean, at it. I'm that, not that's, saying that's, that's right. That's it's great. just sure. my opinion. But that's when you stay multiple years and you you build on what you did the previous year, to me, you go up the rung of the ladder of Auburn greatness in yeah. my eyes. Yeah, but those guys that you mentioned were here for a year, they all won a championship. That's why we're still talking about them at that True. regard. I mean, you, I, I mean, I get you it. Win a and, championship and, yep. and put you in a different conversation. But sure, yeah, if you're here for multiple years and you help build a program and leave it better than you found it because you came multiple seasons, 100%. I'm there with you. And I think Jalen Williams enters that conversation too, if all of this happens. If I agree. Happens. Yep. All right. Does Auburn live chat? Does Auburn win the SEC tournament this weekend? We discuss and react in just a moment right here on Locked On Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs is the best place to find qualified candidates uh, for your small business. I've used LinkedIn. Daryl, you use LinkedIn all the time for uh, yes. for your company. And it sounds like they've uh, they've sent you several very qualified applicants. They have. They do a lot of the legwork for you, which is nice. You're not guessing. It's, it's a lot of the stuff I look, I consider it like sifting. They sift through stuff. They get you serious yep. candidates and they do all the legwork for you on the front end. So you can really focus on honing in on serious candidates and then bring them upon your organization. And that's what I love about using them. Yep. So uh, head over to linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. And of course, of course, terms and conditions, they apply. A lot of folks in the live chat saying Auburn will win the SEC tournament this weekend oh how far we've come how many times have we had to like talk people off the ledge throughout this season and it's like this team's good they just got to put it all together and crazy enough like they weren't that efficient they've been way more efficient over the past month than they were this afternoon which i think is encouraging aiden holloway four of eight scored nine jalen williams only shot the ball twice but he made a three so we're all cool with it Janai Broom, 6 of 14. Normally, he's been more efficient than that from the floor. Still, shoots 14 times, scores 18 points. You certainly take that. Chad, who's actually kind of cooled off a little bit, 3 of 8 for 8 points. Like You'd like that to be a little bit more effect, effective and efficient, and, and I think he can be, and I think that's why I think the, the sky is still the limit with everything that this, uh, this team is doing. Katie Johnson, 4 of 7 for 10. You take that. Chris Moore, three for three with six points for all the Chris Moore haters all season. He showed up when you needed the most, and when you needed to punch somebody in the mouth, he was there. I just, this team's got it, man. This team has so many pieces. We've said it over and over and over again. And now that we're, we're here, it's March, it's postseason basketball. Everybody's doing what they need to do, and there's still room for them to do it better, Daryl. Great point. Uh, you're not going to get everybody to have an off night at the same time. That's why I love this team. Um, I, I push back on the uh, Jimmy Dykes comment about how Auburn doesn't have a star. I, I thought that was ridiculous. They do Janai Broom a, is a star. Janai Broom is a star. Get out of here. But they also have a star and a ton of really, really good supporting cast guys that are that are that really good. So th that whole not have a star thing was dead wrong. But Auburn has six or seven guys that on any night can carry you. Sure. which is phenomenal. So yep. if you get two or three to have an off night, then two or three usually don't. And that's what depth and especially offensive scoring depth does. I mean, you can go through the starting lineup and you can go through the bench. You're not going to get six guys or seven guys to all have an off night. And so if Auburn does that, they've got a chance to win every game they play in, yep. especially on a neutral floor. And that's just kind of like the simplistic view of it. And that's why I love – Guys like Denver Jones and Cheney Johnson also emerging, and they emerged in the last two, three weeks because they're emerging at crunch time at Mar in March, bright lights time. They're doing it. They're coming alive at the right time, period. Hey, shout out to, uh, to Dante Reacts hopping in the chat. Seems like he's a South Carolina guy. Good game, Auburn. Y'all are just too much for my, my Gamecocks. Nobody is beating y'all in this tournament. 
and that's cool. a classy, classy. Yeah. Uh, Hats off to you, Dante. Very, very, very classy, Dante. Welcome. Love to have you. Love having you. And thank you for that. That's uh, kudos to you. Yep. Yep. Thank you for uh, for stopping by and kind of nice to see other people like, yeah, th this team is hot and they just happened to be the team that Auburn was playing against. So I think that's um, that's it. Clay Sharp saying that Chris Moore is for player of the game. Your thoughts on that? Uh, I, I, we, we, need to, we don't need to get ahead of ourselves and, and get crazy. I know we're excited about this win, but put the streamers confetti down, Clay. And uh, no, I love Clay. I think that's a little <laughs> bit. That's a li that's a little bit of a of a stretch there. Um, he was solid, workmanlike, lunch hat. But I wouldn't put him in as the the player of the game. Lunch hat. I mean, hard, hard hat. hat, hard hat, lunch. But see, Clay screwed me up so much with, with that, that take with, with that the Chris take, Moore player. Of the he game has take. my head spinning that it's just uh, is it what in the name of. Is that a lightsaber? <laughs> I people wanted a light show and apparently uh, there's a lightsaber. Uh, it was a lightsaber. It, it was some was it red or purple. Just, I couldn't tell. It was red and so we kind of it was symbolic of they have like a just, sith lord in the same we room just anakin you. we just anakin skywalker south carolina so i think that's what the uh wow What's that your, was yeah came so out of what what it, uh speaking of sith lords what are, what are what are your expectations for mississippi state tomorrow i mean like your confidence level heading into this game like I feel more confident about tomorrow's game than I did today's. Wow. Ooh, that's a good take. Um, I think I'm equally as confident. I, I don't think that on the on the scale, I think I feel good about this game, but I do feel like this game will be closer. I don't think Auburn's going to beat Mississippi State by 31. I just don't because of the style of basketball that Mississippi State, State plays. Let's be honest, they're pretty good defensively, and they locked down a very good Tennessee team. I know they missed some shots, so you're not going to put up the kind of numbers from an offensive standpoint that you did against South Carolina if you're Auburn because Mississippi State's so much better defensively. But I think Auburn will be able to match that defensive intensity and hold Mississippi State under its average, its scoring average, and is a more elite scoring basketball team because of depth. And so can you, I like can, Auburn team, to win the game, you know. Yeah, for a, a team that's built on defensive intensity, can you do that in your third game in three days? Can you do that? Well, that's a really underrated point because you're expending so much energy it's on effort. the defensive end. It's At effort. Some point you um, just run out of gas. You do, and you know, you know what happens when you're when you're given that much energy. Your shots, your legs, all that kind of stuff from shot making abilities, um, they, they get affected. It. And I guess the only thing I could say is the one thing you could always count on to show up if you're a coach and you, you coach your team a certain style is effort and intensity. It doesn't take a night off. So Mississippi State will have that. Now, are the legs going to be there? Is the is the quickness is the uh, to get to their spots, to guard guys off the dribble, to, to, to rotate and switch and get to the corner and stop threes? I don't know. If it is, then they're extremely well, you know, Conditioned, conditioned and 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 really at a high level and i want to go back to the whole lunch hat thing people are making some great comments about brunch hats and breakfast hats sure uh, i meant lunch pale hard hat and i got i, I knew what two. you meant i was just i got those you two out. i got them a little bit mixed up so take shots it's a it's a great atmosphere i love it let's be festive and i deserve that but so yeah i think I, Mississippi State I, I, I want to read you some numbers may i read you okay. some numbers and, and live chat give me your thoughts on this too if i'm booging too hard please call me out on it I've been known to bug. So in Mississippi State's first game of the SEC tournament, which was yesterday, against LSU, they won 70-60 to 60 against LSU. Here are the minutes played by their starters. 30, 34, 30, 28, and 35. Four of the five of them played 30 minutes or more. Mm. Today, against Tennessee, here are the minutes. 32, 37, 23, 30, 34. You're telling it's me that's not, not going to have an impact? It will have an impact. That's it not sustainable. To. It's not sustainable. I, on the second day, it's not as evident as it is on the third day. You see what I'm saying? Like kids that age that are in that good of shape, 
when you play that game one and have all those minutes, you come back the next night, do it. That's not as much of an impact, but doing it again on day three and having played three games in three days, yes, I think it will be. It, it will have an impact. Against and LSU, definitely- they played four guys off the bench. And then against Tennessee today, they played five, but one guy had zero minutes technically, so he must have been in just for a second. And then one guy had four minutes. So, I mean, this is an eight-man rotation playing its third game in three days. I just think it's a huge deal. I it's, think it's not big. sustainable. I agree. I, I think that it's one of those situations when you combine that stat and the amount of minutes that Mississippi State will now be having to have to rely on its starters to play three games in a row, and then you combine it with Auburn's depth, it could be fatal. I just don't – I just see it – I see Mississippi State's style yep. and trying to keep the game in the mud and muck it up a little bit and pace and all that. I still think Auburn comes out on top, and I think they could win double digits. I just think it's going to be a little bit uglier basketball game than what we saw today. All right. Our favorite part of the show. All season we've asked, what's Auburn's record in the next five games? So my question today, I'm altering it a little bit. Does Auburn play five more games this season? So what would that mean? Let's let's do that. So they play tomorrow, so that's one. If they beat – if they beat state, which most people are in agreement here that they will, so that's two. And then that would put them in the round sweet of sixty-four. 16. Yeah, round of thirty-two, sweet sixteen. Assuming they win, I mean tomorrow. they could. I, I well, I think they could play five without having to win the championship to get to the championship game. If you think about it, I mean they could. You know, if they lose tomorrow, then could they play four in the NCAA tournament and get to the elite eight? Yeah. Which they I think could. we would rather have, right? I but, would. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I just think totally. but I mean what like that, like that but, meme says, why not both? Yeah. Yeah. It's like we're here. Let's go win a championship. Yeah. Let's go you win know, a ring. Just, let's get a banner. They, and then let's go do see what we can do in the dance. Never take for granted when these moments come around and think, well, we can do this or we can do that, or I'll trade this next. You you take the moment. Like you said, it's opportunity. Now you got to take advantage of it. And I like this team's where they are right now. I love the way they love each other. I like the way they share the basketball. I like how they get excited about the little things. I like the unselfishness, the guys that have bought in, that they could be starting on other teams. There's a lot of things. This could be, at the end of the day, one of Bruce Pearl's best coaching jobs at Auburn. Yeah. I think it really so. could. Yeah, I mean, he he's, he's had to take pieces that came in from transfers and and move them around, and he's got a whole new backcourt with a point guard position, right? I mean, well, Trey yeah, Donaldson point, is there, but yeah, yeah, the point guard position changed like every few weeks. It seems like it's like okay, this is the guy. Okay, this is the guy. And it's just it, it's been kind of you know has all the ebbs and flows. Um, I'm out of touch, Daryl. I'm just out of uh, touch. Um, I think you said just 15 minutes ago if people are paying attention. Yeah, that, that I changed my mind. Come, you've yeah. come, you changed your mind. So, but it's also a terrible argument me. because Auburn was a two seed and lost in the second round. So it's like that's not everything. But whatever, we can pick and choose and be toxic. That's fine. Good let's for be, you. Olivia. Let's be I'm very happy. proud of you. Why, why be? Yeah, why be toxic and come in here? I mean, be 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 happy. Let's celebrate. It's a, it's a good win, weird. and it's it looks weird good. Flex. And and you and you just said that ten minutes ago that you've come around on that. So yeah, that's okay. That's yeah. okay. Good for you. Very proud of you. I hope you're not an adult because that would be embarrassing. <laughs> that would be embarrassing. All right, player of the game. Um, you've made it very clear that you don't think it's Chris Moore. <laughs> it got me so frazzled that I talked about lunch hats. So, yeah, I I mean, I, I do not think it was Chris Moore. I get what he's saying that sometimes it's important. A guy, he's, he's an important player. Yeah. Stat sheets don't tell the story sometimes. But there were so many other people that did so many other. I mean, listen, don't I'm not undervaluing his his uh, contribution to the basketball team today. I'm not at all. I just don't think it was at the level of of player of the game. Yeah, I'm going Janai Broom. I'm going Janai oh, Broom. He has too. the best plus he, minus on the team. Oh, Led the team yeah, in points. He, yeah. he went off. Yeah, he number two he, is he Janie did. Johnson for me. Four of eight, 11 points. You take that. If Janie Johnson does that, Auburn's not losing again. We talked about that. You get him into double figures. Whoo. Dangerous. Yeah, I, I like the I like your your thought process. I like both of those. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Janai Blue, big KD players, had a good game too. Big players 
the guys that you say are your your you know the, that you count on your meal tickets they show up in the biggest games and game one of this tournament was huge because Auburn what they did the previous SEC tournaments it was big and now you're in the semis and now you've solidified a four seed maybe a three seed if you take care of business we'll see yeah but um that that part of it is now in the bank so what do you think about just real quick and, and we'll, we'll be done in a second if, if y'all have any uh if y'all have any thoughts or takes or questions in the live chat go ahead and drop them in we'll go a little longer since i think this game warrants it but your your quick thoughts um on the other two games tonight so kentucky and texas a&m and then alabama's playing florida, florida. right yeah. Yeah. yeah okay yeah which surprised me that they struggled as much as they did with georgia florida so you know, you wonder if the fatigue factor, I mean, that was their first game. They had to expend a lot of energy to, to mm -hmm. beat Georgia, which they probably didn't think they were going to, Zach. You know, these things matter. When you think that you're going to be able to empty your bench with five minutes to go and give your starters that much of a blow, and you look at that load of minutes, that load management that you just read from Mississippi State, Florida probably thought their starters would be in the 20-minute range and they were going to be able to rest guys like Auburn was able to do tonight. That matters. Um, so, you know, we'll see. Um, so why it's important to have a deep bench and blow somebody out. That's a wonderful combination. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I think, uh, so, but I still think, I think Kentucky wins and I think Alabama wins. And then I think Kentucky beats Alabama and I think we beat Mississippi state and it's an Auburn Kentucky SEC tournament championship. That, that is my prediction. Do you agree or disagree with all that? I agree. I think Florida, because of how they played Georgia, I would I'm a little less confident in their ability to beat Alabama. And also I go to that old adage where they've already beat Alabama this year. It's so tough to beat a team twice. It's motivated. So sure. I agree. Yeah. I think Alabama gets out of there with a win. I think Kentucky just, you know, looks really good against AM. And then you've got your final four of uh, that we've talked about with Auburn, Mississippi State, Kentucky, Alabama. And then I like Auburn and Kentucky advancing as well. And that would right. be a nice, nice matchup. Yeah, I think so. I think so. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, for hanging out with us. What a fun, fun game. And hopefully we have a fun time tomorrow uh, as Auburn will take on Mississippi State then. Daryl, how can people check out everything that you've got going on? I'm with you on Locked on Auburn Wednesday mornings, Friday mornings, um, and after every single basketball game, we go live. And um, may the force be with everybody. That's right. And with you as well. No question about it. You please like the video. Please subscribe. We'll see you tomorrow. Recapping Auburn's game in the semifinal of the SEC tournament against Mississippi State. Until then, this has been Locked on Auburn.